Good evening and welcome to Gainesville High School. We appreciate you taking the time this evening to hear about the upcoming registration process. I am Susan Sigman, a counselor at Gainesville High School, joined by Mara Mazaz, also a counselor here. Tonight we'll talk about upcoming events, our specialty program, and the academic advising process. If you have questions, feel free to ask them using the Q&A feature. Applications for specialty programs in Prince William County are due February 1st. Students may access the application on the PWCS website under specialty programs. Please note that if you reside in the Gainesville High School Attendance Zone, you need not apply for our specialty program. Information has been presented to 8th graders at our area middle schools. If you're interested in viewing those presentations, recordings will be available through your child's Canvas account. Gainesville High School staff will be meeting with 8th graders in person to assist with course selections. We will visit Gainesville Middle School February 14th and 15th Reagan Middle School on February 6th and 7th, and Bull Run Middle School on February 16th and 17th. If your child attends a different middle school and is not zoned for Gainesville High School, we will assist with their course selections after they have been accepted to and confirm their intent to participate in our specialty program. Looking at the larger timeline for the course registration process, it begins in February when we meet with 8th graders individually. We also meet with our current 9th, 10th, and 11th grade students individually during the months of February and March. After that, the master schedule is developed in April and May based on student requests. Students may request course changes until May 5th. We ask that you please not request changes after this date. Courses will be adjusted in August only for students who attended summer school. There will be an orientation for rising ninth graders and new students. The date for that has not yet been set. The specialty program at Gainesville High School is called Pathways to Global Citizenship. There are 14 pathways which students may choose. The courses in each pathway are connected by themes. The purpose is for students to create connections among what they're learning in various courses, allowing them greater depth of study. We encourage students to explore various career and college options along the way. Most students will take about four to six courses in their pathway throughout the course of high school. There is also an opportunity for an extended learning experience in the senior year that is student created and led. Students who reside in our attendance zone and who are confident that they will remain in our attendance zone for the duration of their time in high school do not need to apply for the Pathways program. Students from other attendance zones may apply for one of these three pathways. Students accepted into Gainesville must stay within their pathway for the duration of their time in high school. Gainesville's base school students may take courses in multiple pathways if they choose. Please see our website for more detailed information about the Pathways program. This is a summary of the graduation requirements for students working toward the Advanced and Standard Diplomas. Special education students also have the option of pursuing an Applied Studies Diploma based on their IEP goals. The Advanced Diploma requires that students have four years of each of the core areas of English, Math, Science, and Social Studies. The Standard Diploma also requires four years of English, but only three years of Math, Science, and Social Studies. Both diplomas require two credits of Health and PE, one credit of Fine Art or CTE, one credit of Economics and Personal Finance, and two credits of electives taken in a sequence. The Advanced Diploma requires that students take three years of a world language or two years of two different languages. 
the total credits must add up to 26. For the standard diploma, the total number of credits must total 22. Regardless of diploma type, students must pass five SOL tests to graduate. Those five tests include reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. In addition, students must obtain training in first aid and CPR. They must also have a virtual experience, which for most students is completed in their economics and finance course. Additionally, the requirement for the CTE or career and technical education credential may also be completed during economics and finance. In high school, students take seven classes altogether. Within those seven classes, students typically take English, math, science, social studies, health and PE, and two electives. Those electives may include a world language plus another class of their own choosing or two classes of their own choosing. Students have the opportunity to take advanced coursework throughout their years in high school. Advanced courses require a greater time commitment and greater effort on the part of the student. When thinking about advanced courses, students should consider their interest as well as their other activities in and outside of school. Students who do take the advanced courses and earn a C or above will earn an extra half weight in their GPA calculation and should plan on remaining in the course for the entire year. We ask that students choose two alternate or backup electives. Some courses initially offered may be canceled if there is not enough student interest. Conversely, if courses are over-enrolled, students may not be able to get their first choice. In these cases, students will be placed into their alternate electives. If a student does not indicate any alternate electives, they will be placed in available courses. Gainesville High School is committed to building an inclusive and welcoming environment for all students. Students will go through the scheduling process with high school counselors when we make our visits to middle schools in February. Representatives from our special education department will also attend IEP meetings in the spring for eighth graders making the transition to our school. We look forward to meeting you and working with you. Gainesville High School is also committed to helping students increase their English language proficiency as they work toward earning their high school diplomas. Students will go through the scheduling process with high school counselors when we make our visits to middle schools in February. We will also work with middle school staff to ensure proper placement of students. Families will have the opportunity to work with case managers prior to the beginning of the school year. Before high school counselors meet with eighth grade students, we ask that families visit our website and review the information about our Pathways program, as well as our list of courses. When you meet with the high school counselor at your school in February, please have your list of seven classes and two alternates ready, as well as any questions that you may have. After academic advising, check student view and parent view to make sure that your course requests are accurate. The deadline to ask for course changes is May 5th. Changes will be made based on the availability of classes at that time. Schedules are typically released in student view and parent view the week before school starts. The class of 2027 page is on your child's dashboard in Canvas. In this course, you will find several resources explaining the academic advising process. Please note that the Canvas course contains the form that your child will need to use if they want to request a change after they have met with the high school counselor. The deadline to ask for course changes is May 5th. High school counselors divide their caseloads alphabetically. 
This is the list of current counselors. Next year more staff will be added so the current alphabetical breakdown will shift. As we welcome you to the Gainesville High School family, we encourage you to stay connected with us through our webpage, social media, and YouTube. At this time, we'll be happy to take some questions. Please use the Q&A feature to type in any questions that you may have. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm just going to go over a couple um, points uh, to highlight for you um, and then start answering some of the questions that we have. Um, so there will be a new student um, open house on April 27th. That's an evening event. Um, parents, you're welcome to come to that. Um, at that event, that's where you will get information about um, sort of the daily operations of the school, um, such as the bell schedule, lockers, buses, grading expectations, that sort of thing. On August 17th, so at the very end of the summer, there will be orientation for rising ninth graders and new students. That's uh, an event that happens during the day and that is um, intended for students. Um, there will be transportation, so um, if you're not able to bring your child that day, um, there will be buses. Um, at that, uh, on that day at the orientation, that's where students will get their schedules. If you're not able to attend that day, don't worry, your schedule will be um, viewable in student view or parent view the next day, which is August 18th. Um, there is uh, a uh, newsletter, it's in the form of a s'more that's been um, put in the chat. So um, if you have you know, more questions, some of the information we went over is, is there. Um, prior to, to our webinar tonight, um, we asked for uh, people to submit questions. And so the questions that we got ahead of uh, this evening, um, a lot of them had to do with sort of our, our daily operations, such as our um, the bell schedule, how do buses work, um, meals during the day, um, our grading policies, GPAs, things like that. So those types of questions will be answered at the open house in April and again at the orientation in August. Um, some questions from this evening. Um, have a couple of questions about the advanced diploma. Um, one person is asking, what are the benefits of that? So basically the advanced diploma, what that requires above a standard diploma is that students have four years of all of the core academics. So English, math, science, social studies, um, as well as a world language. So the requirements for the advanced diploma, um, those are meant to ensure that students are taking the courses that four-year colleges are looking for. So um, for the vast majority of our ninth graders coming in, um, we have everybody planning on an advanced diploma. And then um, as they make their way through high school over the years, if they change their mind or um, they might be short a credit here or there. They're still planning to go to college, but they might not have enough for an advanced diploma. And that's okay. We're able to um, move their diploma type, modify that as they move through school. Um, somebody asked about if the advanced diploma is eliminated. Um, I've heard that rumor flying around for several years, but I've never seen anything official from the Virginia Department of Education. Um, Virginia has made a commitment to our students that the graduation requirements that are in place when you enter into ninth grade will be the exact same requirements um, when you graduate. So they don't uh, they don't sort of change the rules of the game midstream. Um, somebody asked, what is HPE? That's health and physical education. So students have to take um, two years of that to graduate. Typically they take one year in ninth grade and one year in 10th grade. 
Okay, let me go and look at some of the other questions here. Um, someone asked if if their child is zoned for Gainesville High School, um, that they do not have to complete the specialty application. That's correct. So if you are zoned for um, Gainesville High School, your child will not have to complete that application. Um, if you are a transfer, then you would have to complete the application. Yep. Okay. Um, another question, is there a way to do PE classes during the summer? So um, Prince William County has two summer school programs. One is in person and one is virtual. Uh, the virtual program is called Virtual Prince William and um, students can register um, on the website. It's too soon for that. They usually don't open the registration until about March or April. Um, and if you're, when, when your child is speaking to the high school counselor, if they have a question about that, we will be happy to go over that with them. The summer program that's in person is at one of, one of the high schools in Prince William. It's not offered at every high school. They have just one central summer school site. And um, that changes from year to year. So we're not quite sure um, which high school it will be at this summer. Um, both programs are the same six week time frame. It runs from about the end of June through the beginning of August. Um, the in person program is 7 30 in the morning to 12 30 in the afternoon. The virtual program is asynchronous. Okay. Um, okay, if students take PE in the summer, is there an option to have a study hall period as a ninth grader? So the answer to that is no. If uh, a student is taking PE in the summer, then they would take an additional elective. So um, a most common reason for taking PE in the summer is because you have two electives that you're committed to and you, and you want to stick with. Um, so that might be maybe you're in band and engineering or you're in um, art and biomedical or something like that. Um, but if you have room in your schedule, then there's there's no reason um, that you would have to take PE in the summer. Okay, I think that one was answered. Someone um, had asked, oh, sorry. Um, if you don't have an advanced diploma, does that affect you getting into any four-year colleges? Um, the answer is no, it will not negatively impact you if you do a standard diploma. Uh, students have the choice between a standard and advanced. Advanced diplomas do um, require a foreign language requirement. Um, so three years of one language or two years of two different languages. A lot of four-year colleges do have that foreign language requirement, so it would be beneficial for them to do an advanced diploma, but doing a standard diploma does not negatively impact getting into any four-year colleges. Okay, um, Okay. another question. If we have a rising ninth grader, do we attend both the April 27th and August 17th? So April 27th, that's an evening event uh, that parents can attend. August 17th is uh, during the day and that's for students. So yeah, yes, the students should come to both. The parents would just come to the one in April. Okay, let me see. Okay, more questions about PEs. I think we covered that. Um, okay, questions about the timeline for um, being notified about getting into specialty programs. Um, so those are due February 1st. I believe the notification back to you is February 15th. Um, if you're, if you, don't have an answer by the time the Gainesville counselor is coming to, to your school, um, you'll still meet with us. And um, if you end up being transferred to another school, then the school will make sure that you have the courses for that particular um, specialty program. But we'll meet, when we come to the middle school, we'll meet with everybody who's zoned for Gainesville, just in case. Okay. Asked, Go ahead. Um, what languages are available? Um, currently, we have Spanish, French, and American Sign Language. 
Um, and someone else asked, does Spanish one taken in middle school count towards high school credit? So yes, if you pass a Spanish one course in middle school with um, a passing grade, you will get high school credit for that class. Okay, we have a couple of questions about dual enrollment credit and associate degree during high school. Um, so some high schools offer dual enrollment classes at their school during the day. Um, and those would be typically, that would be a course like um, maybe a 12th grade English or a government class, something like that. Um, and the student takes the class during the day with the high school teacher, but they're, they're also getting credit through the community college. Um, we do not have those types of dual enrollment arrangements here at our high school. Um, right now, the only course that we're offering that, that is duly enrolled is our Teachers for Tomorrow program that's open to 11th and 12th graders. They get credit through Shenandoah University. Um, so no, we don't have a program here where you can earn an associate degree by getting dual enrollment credit. Okay. Um, another question, do students still graduate with honors or is that no longer a thing? So um, they do have honors uh, when they graduate depending on their grade. So it's... Um, Summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude. So yes, there that is still a thing. Okay. I think a couple people have asked um, if their child has applied for a program at another school, what would happen when counselors go to the middle school to do academic advising? Um, Ms. Sigmund, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we would still do scheduling for your student, um, even if they have applied at a specialty program in the case that they don't get accepted into that program, we do have a schedule for them at our school. Um, if they do get accepted and decide to go to that program, then we would uh, transfer those classes over or just take them out of our system. Yep, that's right. That's exactly right. Okay, how many electives do ninth graders take? So. Um, a typical schedule, we have a seven period day. So within that seven classes, a, a ninth grader typically would take four, the four core academics. So English, math, science, and social studies. They take PE. Um, so that's five. They have two spots left over. So if they want to use um, those two spots for electives, they can. If they want to use one spot for a world language, then, then they have one spot for an additional elective. So it depends on the student and what they wanna take, but generally speaking, a student would have two um, spaces in their schedule to determine two electives or a world language plus an elective. Okay, and do you need to register for the April 17th date? No, you do not need to register for that. Um, options for electives are in the class of 2027 Canvas page, um, which you would find on your uh, child's dashboard in Canvas. Um, if they don't see it there, th they have all been invited to it. So you might have to go in and accept the invitation, but that's where um, the elective classes are. Okay, are the schools start and end times for next year changing? No, they are not. They will be the same as this year. Okay, is there an option for a ninth grader to take band and art um, or do they have to wait until 11th and 12th grade? So yes, so a student, yes, would have uh, room in their schedule to take both band and art in ninth grade. Okay. Um, someone asked, if you take Spanish one in middle school, can you switch to ASL in high school? Um, you could. You would have to do, if you're working towards an advanced diploma, um, you may want to take Spanish one and then Spanish two and then switch to ASL one and two. You need two years of two different foreign languages or three years of one. Um, if you decide that you want to do ASL one, two, and three, that could work too. Um, an American Sign Language does count as a foreign language. I've heard of a couple colleges that don't accept it as a foreign language, um, I would say just check their requirements. But um, yes, at our school for graduation requirements, it does count. Okay. 
Okay, so a question about the April 27th uh, event. Um, so that will be in the evening and that's where um, we'll give information to students and parents about more about our day-to-day, -day, um, how, how we work day-to-day -day in terms of um, the bell schedule, you know, what does a typical day look like for a ninth grader? How do they get lunch, their lockers, the buses, um, the programs that we offer, all of those, all of those types of things. Um, and by April 27th, you'll all be settled in your specialty programs if you've applied with us or if you've applied with other schools. Um, so you'll get more specific information um, about how we operate at the open house. Okay, if my child wants to be part of the gaming pathway, what elective should he request? Um, any of those are, any of the electives that you have there are fine computer information systems, digital application or design and multimedia. Um, when your child goes to register um, with the council, with the high school counselor, um, I would just have them ask a little more specifically about what each one of those things are, but all of those are, are good electives. Okay. Let's see. Um, so someone asked, is National Honor Society a thing at Gainesville High School? Um, it is, it's due, um, it's going to be for 11th and 12th graders by invite, depending on um, academics and leadership characteristics. Um, someone else asked, if you don't pass your SOL as a ninth grader, would you pass the class or do you have to redo it? Um, you would not have to redo the class if you pass the class with a passing grade and fail the SOL. Um, you would have opportunities in the future to retake that SOL or to get a credit in a different SOL. Then someone asked, what time does the school start? So our current bell schedule is 7.30 to 2.10 p.m. I'm sorry, 2.15. Nope, I was right, 2.10. <laughs> Okay, there's a question about NJHS, which is National Junior Honor Society, and does that continue in high school? Um, so the answer is no, it does not. Um, we actually get that question a lot. So if you're in NJHS in um, middle school, it, that, that does not carry into high school. Um, National Honor Society um, begins here in 11th grade, so students um, apply brand new for the for National Honor Society. It is not connected to National Junior Honor Society. Um, uh, also a question about dual enrollment. Um, so part of the reason that we don't have a lot of dual enrollment offerings is because we're a new school. Um, and so we'll be looking at adding more dual enrollment as time goes on. Um, we do have a ton of AP classes, which um, in a lot of ways are, you know, they're challenging, um, serving kind of the same purpose of giving students exposure to college level work while they're still in high school. Okay, so um, a question about, is there a website where, where you can go? So all of this information will be posted in the class of 2027 Canvas page. That's where you'll, you can find all of this copies of um, tonight, the recording from tonight will be in Canvas. Okay. Someone asked, if I am planning on doing PE over the summer, would I take that into account during course scheduling in February? Um, so we would still schedule the health PE class into your course schedule once we get um, verification that you successfully passed the course over the summer, then we would go ahead and change that um, to one of the alternative electives that you choose during academic advising. Okay, question about AP scholars. Um, the question is, I understand if students take AP seminar and AP capstone, um, they can earn an additional separate diploma if they pass the exam. So it's not a separate diploma. The, the AP seminar and capstone are, are programs through the college board that um, where students, there is 
an exam and a portfolio so students can submit those and um, depending on what college they go to, they could potentially earn college credit for that. Um, but no, it's not a separate diploma that you earn. The diploma that you earn comes from the state of Virginia. Okay, can a ninth grader be in an AP class? So generally speaking, no. Um, typical pattern would be in ninth and 10th grade, we have advanced coursework that prepares students for AP classes. So vast majority of AP classes are for 11th and 12th graders with ninth and 10th graders taking um, the introductory classes so that they're ready for, for the AP courses later on. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. A lot of uh, questions about um, PE, <laughs> PE in the summer. So I think we've answered that one pretty well. Um, let's see. Um, there, right now we have 70 questions in the chat. So we're working our way through them as best we can. Um, I do see um, a lot of questions about band and chorus. So I would um, have you um, speak to your current band and choral directors um, it, with questions about all county and things like that. Um, the the middle school music directors they work with you know the different high schools in in, in um, helping students make the transition into those different programs. So those that's probably your best resource to ask for the real specific things about the music programs. Okay. Okay, question about Signet, which is um, the gifted program. So um, students who have been identified for Signet, that carries over into high school. Um, and those services are provided um, to students here. Um, so you don't have to be reevaluated for it or anything like that. Um, every year you'll get a form that uh, where you can say you wish uh, for your child to continue. So, but you don't have to go through a whole other process to, to um, qualify for that. Okay. Are there any requirements or teacher recommendations required for the introductory courses in ninth and 10th grade that prepare students for the AP courses later on? So when we're talking about placing students into advanced classes in ninth and 10th grade, um, we look at a lot of different things. We, we look at how well the student has done up to this point. We look at what their current teacher is recommending for them. We look at student interest, um, their desire to want to do an advanced course. So it's not, uh, there's not one criterion that we would look at to say you're placed in the class or not. We um, look at lots of different things. And, and part of, the, of what we do when we meet with the eighth graders one-on-one -on -one is we try to make sure everybody has a good balance to their schedule. So, um, not stacked up with advanced everything if that's not appropriate for you um, and just making sure that that the decision to take it an advanced class is um, driven by um, what the student wants what the work that they're willing to put in and and just sort of understanding the the expectations of those courses okay um does PE in the summer cost money? Yes, it does. Um, I believe the tuition is around $375 for, uh, for a summer class. Okay, can a ninth grader join a sport? Yes, they can. They're eligible to, to be on our sports teams. Okay. Um, one of the questions, yes, our high school does put on theater performances. Um, we've had one show this year, as well as a couple student-directed one-act plays. Um, yep. Okay. We do have robotics. Um, we have a robotics club, and they do 
uh, separate into competition teams as well. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we're kind of to the bottom of the questions. Um, we uh, appreciate you um, joining us this evening and um, taking some time out to learn more about um, the programs and, and how the registration process is going to work. Um, I would say don't worry. A lot of times parents are nervous because we're going to be talking to your to your kids while they're at school and you're not there to see what we're talking about, but th they will get a copy of um, what they have um, selected so that you can see that. Um, we will take changes up and through up through May 5th. Um, the earlier that you know that you want a class, though, the better it is, the, the higher the chance you have of getting into that course. Um, so um, all of the information, again, is in Canvas. There's a change form. So let's say your student comes home from meeting with the high school counselor and they say, oh, no, I didn't mean to pick that. I meant to pick something else. That's OK. They can go in Canvas and use that change form and let us know that they've changed their mind. Um, so we look forward to meeting your students and, and working with you. And um, you know, feel free to, to reach out if you have questions. Um, again, there's a lot of resources in Canvas. Um, and so um, most of the questions probably that you have will be answered there, but we're here to help if you need us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.